from the bottom, ain't no half stepping. I'm the dog, I made it through, so they don't ask questions. Long Beach, and it ain't no half repping. Once a dog, always a dog, so they don't ask questions. From the bottom, make no half stepping. I'm the dog, I made it through, so they don't ask questions. Long Beach, and it ain't no half repping. Once a dog, always a dog, so they don't ask questions. Tell Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Depart ABMA series again. I'm Kim, uh, the community need. I hope all of you are having a, a great weekend. Uh, in order to build a community truly loved by filmmakers, actors and actresses, movie fans, we invite guests across the industry <coughs> to join us and share with us their thoughts and views about movie or simply storytelling. So today we have another very exciting guest joining us. Uh, please welcome Ivana Pequero, star of an award-winning movie, Pan's Labyrinth. Um, our host will continue to be our project creator, Freeman. Uh, now let me pass it down to Freeman. Hi, everybody. Yeah, today we're delighted to have a special guest as our AMA speaker. She is a wonderful actress whose work on TV and film includes Shannara Chronicles, the Misfit Club, Sister of Mine, and one of my favorite fantasy adventure film, Pan's Labyrinth, directed by Oscar winner Guillermo del Toro. Please welcome Ivana Baguero. Hey, hey, <laughs> Steven. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, I hope I didn't uh, butcher your last name. I did ask a Spanish friend on how to correctly <laughs> pronounce it. Baguero? <laughs> yes, that's perfect. That's actually perfect. perfect. <laughs> Great. So um, you may know that uh, our community is uh, mostly consists of uh, Web3 uh, people, but there are also many film lovers, and that's how we would like to cultivate our community. And, uh, you know, today I'd love to have you uh, share experiences uh, with them, and perhaps we may, you know, they may gain some insights um, from you on how to connect the dots between the Web2 space and the Web3 space. And I'll leave enough time at the end so that they can ask you some questions. And so uh, without further ado, let's begin. So Ivana, um, how has your journey in the film industry arrived to this point? As in, could you like walk us through a little bit on, you know, let's say the process of when you started uh, uh, working on uh, Pan's Labyrinth, like, like from the early casting stage how did mm -hmm. that go about of course it's actually quite interesting because a lot of people think that pan's labyrinth was my first movie um because i was so young i was i actually turned 12 years old when i was shooting uh the movie i actually had done eight movies before that and oh, really? the the stories that i went to the american school back in my hometown in barcelona spain and they were looking for a girl that could speak english um, so they went and they cast, you know, all the girls in my grade and different schools. I showed up to this audition, obviously. And out of all the girls, they ended up casting me. Um, so it was out of the blue. I did this movie. I loved it. I decided that that's what I wanted to do, that that was going to be my after school activity, trying to be an actress. And I then got a manager. So I got a team uh, that helped represent me. And through that, I eventually auditioned for Pan's Labyrinth. And I met Guillermo del Toro um, in the auditioning process. And that's how I ended up landing that movie when I was 12 years old. So what, what was it like, like during the casting? I'm sure uh, he did casting all over the, you know, the, the world looking for the right person to play Ophelia. And what, what was it like, you know, like, when you first uh, spoke with him? It was it was actually really interesting because the role was supposed to be for, I think it was written for like a seven or an eight year old and I was 11 or 12. Um, and it's funny because one thing I've learned in this industry, especially for people out there that maybe want to be actors or they want to, um, you know, sort of get a foot in the industry is that you should never play casting director in your head because when I got this audition I thought I wasn't right for the role I was way too young but mm -hmm. I still showed up I auditioned and I you know I, I kept going through different stages of auditioning 
And then eventually I got to the last round and Guillermo del Toro was in that room. Um, I remember he was there with his wife and I had to play this really emotional scene when I'm talking to my little brother in my mother's belly. And they both started crying um, then and there. And it was really, really emotional. And what was interesting about it is that right after I finished, he stood up, he grabbed the script on the table and he gave it to me and he said, do you want to be my Ophelia? And of mm. course, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really magical. I think it was meant to be. Well, that's a uh... <clears throat> great start of your career or even though you've done many before that but that, that, that's the one that pretty much launched your career for sure yeah and you know for the people who who, who have seen the movie the the story intertwines the real world with a kind of mythical uh world centered with an overgrown uh, uh, labyrinth and a fawn creature and um what i'm trying to get to is that um, in, in, in some ways, you know, it, it, the labyrinth itself serves as a purpose of an escape for Ophelia, right? So she created this fantasy. And what, how do you see this relate to the, the metaverse these days? It's, it's kind of like a little bit similar, right? We're creating yeah. a metaverse and we, you know, it is a place that we can escape to. Totally. You can draw so many, uh, you know, parallels between I would say the metaverse and Pan's Labyrinth, because at the end of the day, you know, the, the movie is about two realities. It's about mm -hmm. the the toughness of, of the civil war that Ophelia is, li is living around her. And then whenever she evades herself and she goes into this, um, the labyrinth, she's going into a different world. So she's accessing that other reality um, where she's, you know, in and out and she's dabbling um, and it's much like the metaverse, I think, you know, it's like there's real life and then there's this other platform, if you want to call it that way, where you can just access a completely different reality and sort of be there and be whoever or whatever you want. Exactly. That's why, you know, like this whole dig digital identity is uh, is taking off and everyone wants to have their own avatar and, and, and you know, to be in a different world where they can, you know, maybe... Um, uh, maybe it's sort of like an escapism, you know, to the real world. Completely, a hundred percent. Even I, w I would say, just to add on a personal note, even as a child, I was very much. I mean, I've always been into video games, but as a child, I used to love going into these um, chat rooms and games on my computer. Um, and it, that's kind of what it felt like. It felt like, you know, I was living real life. I was going to school. I had to deal with all of these things, but then I got to escape much mm -hmm. like Ophelia. And I got to go into, you know, these different worlds where I could be, you know, whatever I wanted. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, this, the metaverse clearly is, is the future of that. And, and it's, it's so exciting. Yeah, so so basically, even though you became a movie star, you're uh, kind of just like a nerd, just like the rest of us here, right? Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> Very much yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So on a side note, like just, just regarding, this is like more a, maybe a personal question is that, you know, like when I watched uh, Pan's Labyrinth, you know, the ending when Ophelia dies and, and uh, I hope no spoilers for everyone who hasn't seen it, but anyway, she dies. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And um, like at the end, like they're, they're you know, like like uh, the flower. Is that the metaphor of your character um, still surviving in the labyrinth and and did very well? Yeah. Is that how it is, or is that? I just mean, <laughs> this is no, but the, this is like the million dollar question because uh, he, it's an open ending. That's what mm -hmm. Guillermo loves to say. Mm -hmm. um, it is an open ending, so you can sort of imagine whatever it is that you want to believe i i do believe that what you just mentioned i think she she lives in that labyrinth um and i think she does access that fantasy world that she really really craved and mm -hmm. she became that princess that's what mm -hmm. i choose to believe right Great. Let, let, let's move on a little bit to other uh, work that you've done. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Shannara Chronicles because actually there's something um, that we could, uh, we kind of have collaborated in, in some way, not really <laughs> collaboration, but there is some uh, interaction at least because uh, um, when you guys were, actually we started first, when we were shooting Into the Badlands, um, our, our showrunner 
Al Gawkin, Miles Miller. They're also the showrunners for um, Shannara Chronicles. Although we we never met back then, but uh, we we could have crossed paths, but at some yeah. point, right? So both of these shows are are you know also in a way. Yeah, obviously, Shannara Chronicles is is a total fantasy. Also, into the Badlands is like a uh, post-apocalyptic world. There's a lot of world building, right? In in a way, that's kind of what uh, we're all trying to do in the metaverse. It's it's world building. Mm-hmm. Whether you want to participate in some, uh, you know, other platforms, uh, uh, virtual universe, or you want to build it yourself, it's still a lot of world building to do. And um, but anyway, like like back to what I was saying, you know. How, how was your uh, uh, your experience in shooting Shannara Chronicles? It was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, mm-hmm. It's, but it, it is really. It's funny that that's sort of that was our first connection um, mm-hmm. when you were doing Into the Badlands and I was doing the Shannara Chronicles. Um, but for me, shooting that show was very, very special because. As we've briefly um, touched on, I've always been, you know, a big fan of like video games and and anything genre really, like fantasy, sci-fi. In fact, Lord of the Rings had always been one of my favorite movies. So for me to be able to go to New Zealand and shoot this fantasy show where there's elves, there's trolls, there's horseback riding, I was taught, you know, how to use daggers in real life. Mm-hmm. It was it was a dream come true. It was it was an amazing experience. And um, jokes aside, I would love to see a metaverse of of that because I would get lost in there <laughs> for sure. Yes, exactly. That's a that's a lot of world building with a lot of <laughs> yeah. features as well. But you know, I was always amazed that uh, our, our incredible showrunners um, could kind of like do two shows at the same time and be so competent. And and you know, I, I remember at times like uh, we we're like, oh, like like. Maybe our off time, they would fly to because we were shooting in in Ireland, and you guys were where New Zealand or, or we were in New Zealand. Yeah. So now yeah. that I think about it, they were we were in completely different sides of the world. Yeah, quite in- incredible. That tells you how important a good showrunner is, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's really interesting now that you mention this because I think one of the utilities. Um, I, I think it could be really interesting in the future is using VR in the metaverse to, to sort of, for example, if they um, needed to work on Shannara, but they were in Ireland with you guys, they could enter the metaverse and, and, you know, become, be able to rehearse with us and see us and, mm-hmm. and, you know, be in contact with us directly. It's, I guess it's like the next level of, of Skype. Um, that yes. would be so cool. That that is, uh, you know, uh, that would be a great uh, idea. Actually, it's not even. I I think I've heard like uh, Nvidia is doing their own metaverse. That's more focused on the kind of like the business side, where you yeah. know, like let's say in factories, let's say if you're building a car, right? Then then you don't have to bring all these ship all these engineers over to wherever they're building, you know, the factory, and you could do it use VR to communicate and pinpoint what isn't working, what's not working. So that I I, I think. Uh, um, it's all in the pipeline. Yeah. So, but, but that's a great thought. For, and, um, okay, so, so I think, you know, I, what we're trying to do here is to uh, um, build a community and a, film, a community where, you know, we want, uh, you know, no matter what you, you want to be in this, in terms of uh, um, in our community, I think it's important that they, they, they participate and mm-hmm. they, you know, if you're an aspiring uh, actor or actresses or, or, or director or, or whatever post you want to be, or you still want to be a, a, a film lover and, you know, eating popcorn on the sofa, it's all good. So I, I just want to pass on to, you know, do more uh, uh, AMAs where they could actually address you uh, questions. But I think, you know, I got to point out that Ivana, I don't think I could call you a, uh, a web three maxi right so so i think <laughs> no i had to do my homework actually because i'm very much interested but no i'm not well versed i you know i did a bit of research but i don't know much about web three um but it's very promising yeah so so but i think you know what uh, maybe they could ask you a little bit more about you know your your, your bread and butter which is more the uh, acting and, and 
filmmaking process. For sure. So, uh, Kim, I'm going to pass it back to you for now. Right. Uh, so, if anyone has any questions uh, about uh, movies, and if you have any interesting to ask Ivana, uh, just raise your hand here, and uh, we will uh, receive your request, and then uh, you will be speaker. You can press the button uh, at the lower left corner. I think a lot of people are on their desktops, right? Could they yeah. talk desktops? Okay, so we have James here. Yes, hello. How are you doing? Hey, so I just wanted to ask Ivana, who's the absolute best actor she's ever worked with? <laughs> Obviously, I have to say that it's got to be <laughs> James Trevina, <laughs> who's out here with us. Um, he's actually my partner, and we, um, we're working on a very exciting uh, project for those who are also wondering what's coming next. Um, and it's a project that it actually stems, you know, I think a little bit from the the whole video game world. It's based on a graphic novel created by Michael Yee called High Stone Alpha. Um, and and I'm working on it with with James. So he'll that definitely sounds... make a great actor in that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, like, uh, James, why don't you, you know, just hop on and talk a little bit about the you're an actor and um, your experiences of what you see um, in the future of Metaverse. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey, Stephen. How you doing, mate? Good. Yeah, I mean, I think the coolest thing for us as actors um, would be what sort of Ivana touched on would be, because everything now with COVID is self-tapes. Um, for those that don't know, for us to get jobs, we have to audition. Um, so we, we tape ourselves and we send it in. And it would be awesome if that could be virtual um, and then taking it a branch further to then be able to go on to like set and work with directors um, and everybody on set around in the actual virtual world um, would be pretty impressive and really helpful. I think in terms of, again, like if Shannara and Into the Badlands is on different places in the world to be able to like have the director with you and moving certain things and, touching elements that you can then place so that pre-production is, is much quicker would be really awesome. Yeah. So, so um, maybe tell us a little bit more about the project you're working on with uh, Ivana. How's, how's that uh, related to the uh, Web3 space? Uh, again, like Ivana said, I'm not too, we're not too um, confident on the old Web3. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing that we're trying to, get with heist on alpha is it's, it's there's so many possibilities um and it's the perfect example of something that if we could build a metaverse and the realities that we could build and the world building would be just phenomenal mm -hmm. um so i think the potential of projects like this um and obviously you're doing one with yours with departed apes by having certain nfts or, and then bringing them into i guess avatars and into animation into film um, mm -hmm. is the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, like, besides, uh, um, you know, everyone's jumping on the uh, Web3 or Metaverse and all that, I think it's still the most crucial thing, in my opinion, it's still the creativity and originality of a project. I think, you know, um, obviously we're in bear market now, and I think in the next bull run, what uh, will be successful uh, I think what can be successful depends on really how original and how creative it is, how it can push, you know, the technology further. But, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's my opinion. And I think we ha also have some people on Discord uh, who has questions. Why don't we uh, try to have more questions asked uh, uh, for Ivana? Go for it. Yeah, uh, there's someone called The Brain. Uh, he asked that... Uh, uh, you know, he said that Ivana talked about uh, playing games when she was young. And uh, 
what kind of online games were Ivana <laughs> playing back then? Um, yes, well, the games that I was referring to, um, specifically the ones that I compared to the metaverse, where I just sort of, you know, went into these chat rooms and evaded myself and created these personas, um, were in particular RuneScape. I don't know if anyone here has played RuneScape. Um, there was another one called IMVU. Um, those were computer games that I enjoyed a lot, but I was also big on PlayStation. I remember my first purchase ever, my first money ever spent was on PlayStation one, which was this massive thing. Um, (laughs) and, and yeah, I mean, I love all sorts of games. Like I'll do Red Dead Redemption, Grand Theft Auto, um, just a bunch i i get really nervous when they get too too scary but i i love i also love just sort of i i get stuck in like discovering what's around me and that's why i think i would really enjoy uh the metaverse because i'm not so mission driven um but but yeah i i love to just get lost in video games yeah i think ivana just exposed to us how young you are because uh... (laughs) Because I remember the first online experience I've had was in college, and we it's called the uh, multi under level dungeon. We call it mud. So basically, it's just a bunch of online nerds, and and we, you know, it's kind of like the the I, I would say it's the second generation of uh, Dungeons and Dragon, and where uh-huh. where it's like you know someone will just type something. Oh, you're in the middle of the forest. Where do you want to go? And then you just press. N for north or S for south, and that would take you to another page where it's just <laughs> writing. Now you see a dragon with three heads, and and you know there are two chests on the you know one is dirty and one is uh um you know like surrounded by like gold bars or something like that. Which one would you open or so, you know you know some things like that. And then that's you just choose. incredible. Right? It, that's really fun. It's crazy how how far we've come. It is. It's just really quite mind blowing. It's, it's only been like I've been out of college for like maybe like twenty something years. So so it's since this twenty something years has went from just writing to, um, you know, I was I, I have like a um, a VR headset and I think I connect. I, my friend helped me connect it to uh, like a graphics card on the computer, and then I could use that kind of uh, graphic power to. Uh, to play the Half-Life VR, and it's oh, really yeah. it, 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 incredible. I mean, even for me, who's been a great gamer for so long, like I was like quite taken aback. It's like, wow, this is this is pretty damn real. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. All right, let's have yeah. uh, a couple more questions. Yeah, there are a couple more questions. Uh, there's another one from Joanne. Joanne, uh, he asked... Um, so, you, Ivana, you you were a child when you were uh, starring in the Pan's Labyrinth. So, th- did that uh, impact your childhood? I think he is interested in asking about whether that has uh, 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 shaped you differently than a than a normal yeah. teenager. I'm sure it has. I mean, I can say that I had a pretty normal childhood. All in all, um, I would say. I guess acting was almost like my after school activity in that I continued to go to school and I was sort of never homeschooled. And then when I'd get back from shooting, I'd come back to class. I'd have to do what, you know, what all my other classmates were doing. And so I got to, you know, I got to go to all the dances and and do all the activities that normal kids were doing. So I don't think I missed out on any of that. My parents were really, really good about that and about grounding me always but yes, I guess you're surrounded by adults so much that you are forced to grow up in a different way. I think you grow up faster ultimately because you, you know, you're surrounded by by professionals constantly, and you have to act professional too. Um, and I, and I, as a little kid, I completely understood that from the get go that this was a real job um, and not a game. So, so yeah, I think it. it I guess it did you know, make me mature faster, but I don't think I missed anything, but credits to my parents, honestly, because I do know that it it can get crazy for, for child actors and we see it unfortunately. And it's about having a really good support system. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so I think Joyce, Joyce just waves her hand. So you can speak now, Joyce. Um, hi, Ivana. Um, I just wanted to ask about um, your experience as a, as you mentioned, um, you were very into gaming, and we just wanted to ask what kind of things you could um, think of, or what we can learn from the the whole gaming experience and um, help adoption into the, um, in terms of the integration between film and Web three exercises. Hi, Joyce. Um... I really appreciate the question. I'm not really well versed into Web three. Um, I'm not sure how, you know, video games would necessarily translate into that um, integration that you're talking about. Uh, but I, you know, I don't know if you, Stephen, know more about that. Mm. How that could be sort of translated into Web three. Well, yeah, it's it's quite a uh, technical question, and in my opinion, like. The whole transition between you know from normal gaming to to game five is has already begun, and um, I, I and you know I, I think that's the, that will be the the next biggest thing that that will bring in a lot of um, you know like like companies and finance from from the web two space into the web three because there there are billions of gamers in the world you know back then. Uh, you know, maybe maybe ten years back, it's just it's more like a a selected group of gamers, and you know, maybe a uh, maybe twenty million around the world who plays like console games or, or or Game Boy and that. But then, ever since mobile gaming came along, I mean, people play um, Angry Bird or what's the other one called the the, the sugar, sugar Candy Crush? Candy Crush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. I mean, I mean, that really brought in like billions of people. Uh, into gaming, so I think you know the the game five space is, it would be uh, really robust, and it, it uh, and it, it has started already. So yeah, uh, there, there is uh, one more question from Discord, which is a rather interesting one. Uh, he asked if Ivana has ever been to a comic coin. Uh, a comic festival of comic convention mm -hmm. and, and has ha, have you encountered any crazy fans there <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I love that one. question yeah it's a good one um, yeah I do I love comic cons I actually just came back from one in Germany um, like two weeks ago I love them because I as a kid my dad used to always take me to comic cons and I bought you know a bunch of different things and comics and tokens um and now i get to go with my shows which is honestly such a gift and it's and it's awesome because i get to interact with a lot of people um and i get to meet you know fans other people from the industry it always fills my heart and and i think they're super fun so 100 i've been to dozens and dozens yes did you dress up uh, no, I, I haven't dressed up, but I actually, um, in regards to the question, actually, I have seen fans dressed up as characters that I've played, as different characters from shows that I've been in or movies. I've seen people dressed as the Pale Man. Um, <laughs> you know, I've seen crazy things, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, yeah. It's quite amazing to see how how serious the, the, the fanboys are in terms of trying to look, look the part. Yes. So how much effort they put into their costumes and makeup. I, I could imagine, you know, them trying to be Fawn and Pale Man. And... Well, a lot of people do cosplay for a living, too, which which is amazing. It's It looks really great. Right. Uh, maybe, maybe Ivana, could you, like, before we go to our last question, like, um, maybe... Maybe just give us an update on what you're doing now besides the High Sun Alpha. Like, uh, what's the next gig? Or you're yeah. working? Well, I just um, came back from from Europe where I was doing, speaking of, a few conventions. 
And uh, I recently shot a pilot for a show. I can't talk much about it, though. Um, it's always the awkward stage when you're doing pilots or when you're about to start a project and you can't really talk about it. But yeah, I just shot a really exciting pilot. And and I'm also really focused on developing my own project. It's the one thing I've learned in acting. There's a lot of spare time in between projects. And there's a lot of stories that I want to tell and projects that I'm really excited about. High Stone Alpha is one of them. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, there's also a couple of things uh, there in the back burner that I am helping produce, which is really, really exciting for me. Yeah, so guys, you guys should, uh, our community should definitely go check out um, High Sun Alpha. And um, Ivana, any plans to visit Asia, Hong Kong, where we are? Well, where I am. <laughs> oh, I would love to have me over. I would love to. I've only been to Tokyo Um in fact, I was promoting Pan's Labyrinth, uh -huh. and I absolutely fell in love. And jokes aside, it's literally in my bucket list to go back to Asia because I I love the culture, um, and I would love to explore more of it. So, yeah, any excuse? I'll go. Well, we'd love to have you. And um, so, Kim, can we have the last uh, question before we let uh, Ivana go because she's quite busy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh you know, there are quite quite some of them in the community uh, have been hyping about Ivana being the next Marvel hero. <laughs> so uh, they think that <laughs> y you could be a great one, great Marvel hero. So have you ever emphasized yourself, you know, becoming one hero and, uh, you know, and to do that all magic and superpower thing? Yes, I've, you know what, it's always been one of my dreams to be in, uh, superhero movie i actually got really 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 close to one that's all i can say mm -hmm. but um it was actually for dc not marvel um and it was great to sort of be put in that world for one day even just to test for it and i do hope so i mean in the future who knows i'm i'm definitely open to that because much like most of you guys i am also a big fan of all those universes multiverses um, I love that. <laughs> this is funny thing. This is, uh, you know, I got to tell you something kind of funny because I got close to uh, getting a gig with Marvel as well, but I was <laughs> shooting at Badlands. But the funny thing is, so the showrunner of the of, of the Marvel show called Al, and they asked about the hey, you know, you know, like Steven and all that, and then and then Al's response, and he, he told me that he said that to him was, uh, he's busy, he's unavailable. <laughs> And I was like, thanks, no. Al. Couldn't you just say, you know, I may be available, like, for next season? <laughs> oh, so no. Just, like, shut my door to, to Marvel, or at least that show. Thank you, oh. Al. <laughs> no, oh, no. Sometimes you got to, it's better to say sorry than ask for permission. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you, Ivana. It was great having you. I thank you. For, my, uh, for myself and on behalf of our community. Thanks for sharing. And we hope to have you back maybe sometime soon later, maybe for High Sun Alpha, or we go on High Sun Alpha to do AMAs. How about that? That would be amazing. Thank you so much, Stephen. Um, and thanks to the entire team and to the community for, for listening. And it's been a pleasure. I'd love to do it again. Great. Well, Thank guys. Thank you. Good day. Hasta luego, Ipana. Muchas gracias, Kim. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.